Hello, my name is Ryan Bishranlu. I'm studying media production at Bournemouth University and today we're talking about a quite an interesting topic which is very common in our daily lives is the history of sound. Now we all know what sound is but we can't really tell always because sound is invisible. So I got an inside perspective from Joe Tyler who works at audio production at Bournemouth University to give us an inside perspective on what really is sound. Uh, my name's Joe Tyler and uh, I run the Masters in Radio Production at Bournemouth University. What is sound to me? Well, you did very well by saying it's invisible. So sound to me is something that um, my brain tells me um, makes noise, makes patterns. Um, the scientific way of explaining sound is that it is uh, movement of the airwaves as you've probably learned already and that's what this microphone is doing um, and your voice is doing in my head um, but if I was talking about the aesthetics of sound um, sound to me is oh, something like the sound of the telephone ringing which I'm going to answer so that I can keep this on tape um, which tells me that uh, I've got to take a message So There are many different types of sound music, voice, effects atmosphere, acoustics Wind, rain. I use sound, I make sound, um, but I also listen to sound. So uh, if I was to use sound in productions, I have to think very carefully about what I'm using um, for a drama, it's like sound effects maybe, to make the listener think that they are hearing a horse or um, they're in a field in summer. Um, if I'm a listener um, and I'm using sound, then what I'm doing is, is maybe using sound to escape into another world, if I'm honest. For the film Gravity, they used a new sound design technique called Dolby Atmos, which placed you inside that sound, or lack of sound for gravity, maybe. Um, and sound can change the way you experience your environment. We know that our bodies resonate at a certain frequency, so certain noises make us feel uncomfortable. Um, if I played a drone to you um, that had a certain minor tone, if you're a musician you'd understand that, I can make you feel tense or worried or joyful. Um, that's used in pop songs quite a lot. Mm. Uh, so yes, I think sound is, is really important in the way that um, we receive it. And I think, like you say in films, if you watched a film without the sound, what would it be? Mm. I know. Although I have to add to this, this could be interesting for your research, is that Charlie Chaplin, when he first started making films, um, hated sound. He didn't want sound. He couldn't see the point of having sound because what made people laugh was the pictures. Uh, and he used to have live sound, so a live pianist playing at a cinema, can you imagine that, mm. um, in time to all the action um, with sort of subtitles, um, slides that basically said the dialogue. Um, and it wasn't until um, very late in the game that he suddenly thought, hang on, people can hear the sound of someone falling. Um, and it will make people laugh as well. And so, you know, there's a very, very interesting statement that he made about sound and, and the value of it. And once he put it into the mainstream cinema movement, there was no end of, of what the cinema sound design could do. So there you have it. Without sound, our lives as we know it would be very different. In most cases, sound can change how we see our memories. Images we can recall, associated with certain types of sound, can produce a different memory feedback and in turn a different memory recollection of the event. Sound helps us to make sense of the world. This is Ryan Bishranlu of Bournemouth University saying keep safe and sound.